I'm gonna be honest. I think I hate everything below one tenth scale. Not twelfth scale. But if you're bad at fractions, one six scale is bigger. And is bigger better? Let's find out. Excuse me, me and my friends are looking for SCX6. What? Oh, that's a European vacation reference. But Axial, drop the bomb. A big crawler, 1 6 scale. SCX6, JLU, body looks sick, bro. Creepy dude inside, still creepy. You want to know more about the unboxing? Check out the video, link should pop up top. But let's get into is this big $1,100 RTR worth your cash? Is bigger better? Does it crawl right? Isn't 10 scale the best scale? Is that why everything's 1 10 scale? Is it too heavy for me? I'll answer all these questions right now. Scale's a funny thing because without a reference, it looks the same. This looks like a 10 scale crawler with full molded fenders, center transmission. This one has an electronic two speed, which is cool. Uh, it, you can't tell it's big, but this sucker's big. Uh, but the chassis looks like every other crawler, to be quite honest with you. Nothing really stands out as like, oh, that's amazing, except for the two speed. I mean, two speeds is cool. Slow, crawling speed, and then slightly faster. Definitely not fast, but you'll see that later in the video. But the links are all there. Everything's kind of the same. Locked axles, pretty standard. You got a fake engine up front hiding the speed control, which, to be honest with you, looks out of proportion because it's a smaller speed control. I expected like this big box. And underneath, you got a little tiny speed control. Didn't have any problems, but, you know, if you're bigger, you got to get bigger. You know, the motor's big, little speed control. Uh, overall, though, pretty clean layout. Three places for batteries, although if you don't use long leads you can't reach the front to the back like my spectrum pack would not be able to be mounted to the center in the back which made more sense to mount it you can run y packs to get twice the runtime i ran 4s it's a good time let's answer the two questions right off how much eleven hundred dollars rtr not really you still gotta buy a battery and charger so you're probably about fourteen hundred dollars out of your pocket it's a little steep but it's big so you feel like you got something speed wise I, when I did the unboxing, I didn't watch any videos to see how slow or fast it went. I wanted the natural surprise. In the crawling speed, uh, gear one, it's slow, but that's what you want. In gear two, it's twice as fast as it is slow, so it's two times as slow, but not fast. Does that make sense? It's not really fast. You're not going to have a good time blasting this around. But back to the features. How many links you got, bro? Three in the front, four in the rear. But hey, uh, one of the things I don't understand is that Sometimes behind the steering is like a feature or behind the axle steering and other times it's not. This one's got the steering in the front. Does it make a difference? Who knows? It just doesn't have that uh, box highlight. Hey, I got steering in the back of the axle. The good news is this thing is beefy like Chef Boyardee and I don't really think you're going to break it other than if you roll it down something pretty heavy because this is big but it's also big parts so it's going to be much harder to break. Challenge me. Someone's going to break it of course all the time. Three links in the front, steering's in the front of the axle, as you can see. Uh, telescoping plastic and metal drive shafts. All good. I'm going to jump a little bit into performance because the first thing I noticed out of the box was that left to right steering throw was not equal. Uh, and I couldn't really get it out to be equal, which I don't know if the steering links in the front have anything to do with that. But it's definitely a wide turning radius. So because this is bigger, uh, I maybe... You're just used to nimble 10th scale, but definitely had a wide sweeping turning radius. But more on that later. Let's get back to some of the features. Rear axle on the axial, that's hard to say. Uh, has a little logo on there that's cool under the red cap. Uh, one of the nice things I noticed is that the uh, driveline angle isn't extreme. So some of the phasing issues that may or may not be aware of when you go slow and it kind of creeps in a oblong sound. So the only way to describe it. Uh, the less of the angle, the less of that you're going to see. So it's nice to see not an extreme, like 45 degree angle out of the transmission, which is smart. At first, I thought the shocks were out of scale. They're a little too big. But with the massive weight of this thing, they actually seemed to work pretty well, even though it felt stiff. Um, you still had some nice articulation. But uh, threaded bodies, so you can adjust the ride height. I guess people do that on crawlers. Uh, or you can slam it down. Not a lot of angles of adjustment, but again, this I think the weight adds a realism to this that is missing in 10 scale, that we go ultra unrealistic, and this holds some of the realism that only bigger scales can do. So 
So the two-speed transmission obviously is in the middle. The motor's mounted nice and low, very smart. Drive axles don't have extreme angles. But the, one of the things I have a problem with, and this is more of the website slash manufacturer, is I guess you're lazy like me. I got no pictures of the internals of the transmission. I don't want to take it apart. So you take it apart and take a picture and put it on your website. But anyway, metal gears inside. Uh, the three-piece axle sliders there have a floating design for improved performance. All right, a couple things I don't like here. Uh, to take the wheels off, it requires a nut driver, which is a large one like from an A-scale car, no problem, but also uh, six bolts, screws to take off the cap to be able to get to the wheel. Looks cool, pain in the butt. The next thing I'm not really into, although it works and everything's fine and you can add a cell phone to it, the controller at 1100 bucks, like I said in the unboxing video, I feel like this was also in a $30 kit. It's like getting the high-end Mercedes and then having parts from the crappy little cheap car on there. It's a knock on every RTR at this point, but come on, man. Let's step the game up, up, up. If you made it this far, thank you for listening to me. I don't know why I did. Anyway, performance. Once I get out on, out on the course, this is a little probably beginner course right by my house that makes it easy. Uh, I also ran 10 scale here, so my biggest worry of this was the car is too big to be able to scale properly in places that were already scalable. Now, thankfully, this has a variety of rock sizes and gaps, and I had some water because it rained around <laughs> in California, finally. And to be honest with you, my initial impression was it didn't feel as big as I thought it was going to be out in the trails. And that's because the terrain I picked uh, suited it, although I did high center the first three times I went over things. Uh, obviously, with any car, that's the issue. And with the added weight, it's going to hang up more. That's one of the things I kind of figured out. Uh, obviously, gravity affects you and can make you stop. Thank you. Um, but right out of the box, uh, the crawling speed was great. And initially, I wasn't sure. I didn't pay attention. But I felt like this was a censored system because the low-end resolution was actually pretty decent. Uh, you can go really slow. And the trans first geared and the transmission was geared way slow. Like maybe it goes five miles an hour, uh, giving it a mile. But um, you can get it to be very smooth, even though I'm sometimes not as smooth as I want to be. Transition to reverse, uh, forward to reverse. Uh, always a problem for me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just you have to stop and then wait, and I don't. But there's always a jerkiness that I wish wasn't there. But it's something mentally that you have to change, uh, especially if you're a racer that's used to using brake and stabbing it. Just not not natural in, in the terms of if you've used an RC car to just let go and then let it go into reverse. Something you can change. So if it looks jerky every once in a while, it's it's my brain. Don't worry about it. It's a little messed up. It's old. Um, Crawling through things, obviously water is not an issue, and and uh, tire traction was good. The weight of this, again, I, th I think the weight added something I wasn't expecting, a nice realism. Uh, the tires felt stiff, except when we get over some of the rocks, you can see that, you know, the sheer mass of this pushed uh, down, and you could see tire flex, which I wasn't expecting at this size and how stiff the wheel carcasses felt with the foam. But it was fun. Uh, like I said, crawl speed... Uh, approach angle was pretty decent. There's nothing really hanging up the front. Thank God there's no dumb bumper that's 10 feet out in front. It's kind of angled with the licensed CRC bumpers. Uh, I was going to say deep approach, but the, as the ascent angle is good. There's no tire hanging off the back to cause any angles. Uh, the rear bumper does seem to hang off a little bit. But again, this looks the part of a real Jeep, and it, and it does it very well because the body is amazing. Uh, creepy guy aside, and you know, Whoever chose that, you know, I make fun of you every time. But uh, a little weird looking, you know. But it's okay. Here's a good example of that, you know, the weight pushing the tire. And it gets some good flex on there. And the grip was decent, even with wet tires. This terrain is super high traction because although it looks like dirt, this is just a wash that they created with a lot of cement around. And yes, there's some mud that I got to get some slippery in there. But uh, I don't like to play in the mud because I don't like to clean it. But, you know, you guys are crazy enough to you know go balls deep in mud you got your helmet dirty and that's good but uh, enjoy cleaning it and remember to clean your axles i see all these videos of people rusting the inside of their car you got to take it apart seal it and keep the grease in there if you're going to put it in water it's not waterproof um the speed control again was a surprise because it was actually the smaller look like a 10 scale version censored made it very easy to control which was great um and overall pretty decent 4s power 
we will get to a part later where we show some of the speed through the water or actually in the beginning you know not very fast it was fun going through the water but this isn't a kit you're going to go out and bash at speeds because it does roll over uh it's very high center of gravity jeeps don't handle and they don't handle in rc cars just the way it is but eleven hundred dollars i'm going to address that again when you factor in if you are into rc and have probably spent i would say 10 sometimes a hundred times uh into that yes there's some sticker shock but you do get a quality aside from the controller product it has a lot of nice thoughts i like that the, the motor is in the low position for some reason crawlers initially had the motor like propped up in the air uh, now it's low and the angles are lower so driveline phasing which if you look it up kind of goes when you're at slow that's because there's a lot of angles and axles aren't made to bend they're supposed to go straight but you, you can see like nice slow descent when i'm running over my camera you know slower when you go over 400 bucks or whatever the stupid gopro price is but overall axial scx6 full review and a future issue or it's out depending on when you're watching this visual video velocity rc cars magazine the world's probably only best amazingest digital magazine that means when you subscribe you don't get one in the mail you get it in your email so click the links in the description to subscribe <clears throat> support us click like at this point if you're watching at the end you already liked this because if you didn't like me about 30 seconds in you were over it to answer my question that i may or may not ask myself in the beginning is is it worth 1100 dollars yeah i think so controller aside it's a decent looking product seems to be high quality get a lot of good stuff in there is it fast enough for me no but that's a crawler thing that you, you got to get over and, and you get over it doesn't go fast but you're not going fast you're going over rocks and doing some cool stuff and trying to make it look real that's the whole game the weight and the size this is my downside because if you ever watch people with fifth scale uh when it starts to get heavy you can't walk around with this thing it's big you the bumper is a handle in the front but it's annoying to walk around with it's always touching your leg i know i sound like crying about stuff here but this is the right why 10 scale somewhat is nicer because it's small enough to handle this weighs a decent amount takes up a large spot in my trunk that it barely fit in and walking to the trail with this it's a pain in the ass so you have to commit and like those bigger scales where you have some weirdos walking around with their car on a leash because they don't want to carry it or you have to drive it to where you're going that becomes an issue so if you're okay with kind of getting a workout to go run this it's probably good for you you know do some curls do some try extensions with it uh just realize that it's it's a chore to get this to where you're going to go and thankfully this is across the street and i'd have to walk far but um that's the downside of anything larger scale is the weight and the size and kind of the convenience of bringing it to somewhere so this is not as convenient as a 10 scale or god forbid you have one of those smaller crawlers that i want to smack you with um which is not that convenient but the reward is that when you get there it's a good time uh and i, I don't want to imagine i i never drive these things to i don't have a battery because it's a long time um and you can put two batteries in here or three if you want to split it off correctly and know what you're doing but so to answer my questions is that yes i would buy this and to be honest with you i did buy this because i don't really have to pull at uh, some of these places and they don't send me product right away uh, someone online made the comment that i'm late to the party it's my party bro i can i can come when i want and so this isn't a paid you know i didn't get anything for free so this is my honest opinion of this and I'm not saying that other people don't have an opinion even if they're giving it for free because when i'm given for free i still make fun of things that i don't like but I put my money into this because I thought, man, that's cool. And I like the green. Uh, if I had another Jeep, it would definitely kind of probably be green, I think, maybe. But it just looks really cool. And I'm babbling at this point just to fill up some space. Um, comments below if you think larger scale is better or smaller scale or you think that the tiny little crawlers are worth your money. They're not. Just get a bigger one. They're better. And then you can debate how big is better. Axial still makes 10 scale stuff, so their 10 scale stuff is kick ass. This one you have to commit. Commit to the weight, commit to the size, commit to the price, and then lie about it to your wife so you don't get in trouble. 
I'm out. Click the review. Like it, love it, hate it, make fun of me. I don't really care. I actually like enjoying people thinking they're witty with me. It's a good time. And uh, Velocity RC Cars Magazine. Axial CX 6. Me and my friends are looking for sex. That's supposedly German for six. Uh, that's all my movie references. Peace out. Enjoy the extra footage here crawling to the end of our uh, hike here. One of the things I forgot to mention was that if you ever owned a Jeep and I had a JLU, the fan noise when in the summer, uh, this thing mimics it exactly with the ESC just humming away, just like the uh, radiator cooling fans on a real Jeep. Uh, like a Harrier landing constantly. It's, it's either love or hate. Most, I don't know why you love that sound. But that's it. No more voice for you, just enjoy the crawl.